ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದೇಶ್ವರ ಸಮಾರಂಭಿತ್ಯಾನಂದೇಶ್ವರಿ ಮಧ್ಯ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರ ಈ ಸಮಯ ಹಮಾರೆ ಸಾಥ್ ಉಪಸ್ಥಿತ ಸಭಿ ಭಕ್ತು ಸನ್ಯಾಸಿಯು ಅವರ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಕಾ ಮೇ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಐ ವಮ್ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ಸಹಿತ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಕರ್ತಾ ಹೂ ಐ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ಸ್ ಸಮಾಜೀಸ್ ಸತ್ಸಂಗೀಸ್ ಶ್ರೀಮಹನ್ಸ್ ಮಹನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಟಾರೀಸ್ ತಾನೇದಾಸ್ ಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಥ್ರೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಟಿ ವಿ ಲೋಟಸ್ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಚಾನಲ್ ಸಾಧನಾ ಟಿ ವಿ ಜನಶ್ರೀ ಟಿ ವಿ ಅನ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಟು ವೇ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ನೈನ ದೀಕ್ಷಾ ಇನ್ ಮೆನಿ ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ದ ಸಿಟಿ ಈಸ್ ಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಟು ವೇ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ನೈನ ದೀಕ್ಷಾ ನ್ಯೂಜಿಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆದಿ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಕೇಮಸ್ ಹಾಂಗ್ಕಾಂಗ್ ಟೊರಂಟೋ ಕೈಲಾಸಂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ನಗರಮು ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಲಾಸ್ ಏಂಜಲೀಸ್ ಸಿಯಾಟಲ್ ಚಿದಂಬರಂ ಸಿಂಗಾಪುರ್ ಸಿಂಗಾಪುರಂ ಸ್ಯಾನ್ ಹೂಸೆ ಮಧುರೈ ಸೈಂಟ್ ಲೂಯಿಸ್ ತಿರುಮಲ ಒಹಾಯೋ ಪ್ರಯಾಗ್ ವಾರಾಣಸಿ ಸೆರಂಬಾನ್ ಶಿವಕಾಸಿ ಸ್ಕಾಟ್ ಸ್ಟೀಲ್ ಅರಿಝೋನಾ ಒಕ್ಲಹಾಮ ಸೋಮಾನಾಥಂ ವ್ಯಾಂಕೋವರ್ ಭುವನೇಶ್ವರ್ ಚಾರ್ಲಟ್ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲಂ ಸಿಮಿ ವ್ಯಾಲಿ ಕಲಿಫೋರ್ನಿಯಾ ಲಂಡನ್ ಕಾಶಿ ಓಮನ್ ಶಿವಗಂಗೈ ದೇವೋನ್ ಯು ಕೆ ಡೆಕೋಟಾ ಡೂನ್ಸ್ ಬೊಗೋಟಾ ಕೊಲಂಬಿಯಾ ಹೈಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಕ್ರೀಕ್ ಹೈಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಕ್ರೀಕ್ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಕರೋಲಿನಾ ಲಂಡನ್ ಕಾಶಿ ದುಬಾಯ್ ವೈದ್ಯನಾಥಂ ಹ್ಯೂಸ್ಟನ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸಸ್ ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ಗುಪ್ತ ಕಾಶಿ ಇಂದ್ರಾಣಿ ನ್ಯೂಜರ್ಸಿ ಚೋರ್ಪಾಟಿ ನೇಪಾಳ್ ಲಂಡನ್ ಕಾಶಿ ಮುಂಬೈ ಮುಲುಂದ್ ನ್ಯೂಫೌಂಡ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಕೆನಡಾ ಓಮನ್ ಶಿವಗಂಗೈ ಐ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ವಿತ್ ಮೈ ಲವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ again today i insist on understanding about advaita please understand strategizing your day to day thinking based on the simple truths is living enlightenment strategizing your day to day decisions based on the eternal truths is living advaita few days before i was shown a reply by a rich man to a pretty girl who is who has advertised in the dating websites that she wants to marry rich man when the reply was brought to me i told nyanatma that i'll comment on it nyanatma can you read out then i'll comment on it hmm. so the article title this pretty girl was seeking a rich husband the reply she got from a banker was priceless the following is what a woman posted on a dating forum seeking a rich husband i am going to be honest of what i am going to say here i am 25 this year i am very pretty have style and good taste i wish to marry a guy with 500000 dollars annual salary or above you might say i am greedy but an annual salary of 1 million dollars is considered only as middle class in new york my requirement is not high is there anyone in this forum 
who has an income of 500,000 US dollar annual salary? Are you all married? I wanted to ask, what should I do to marry rich persons like you? Among those I have dated, the richest is $250,000 annual income and it seems this is my upper limit. If someone is going to move into high cost residential area on the west of New York City garden, 250k annual income is not enough. I am here humbly to ask a few questions. First, where do most rich bachelors hang out? Please list down the names and addresses of bars, restaurant, gym. Which age group should I target? Three, why most wives of the riches are only average looking? I have met a few girls who don't have looks and are not interesting, but they are able to marry rich guys. Fourth, how do you decide who can be your wife and who can only be your girlfriend? My target now is to get married. Miss Pretty. A philosophical reply from CEO of JP Morgan below. Dear Miss Pretty, I have read your post with great interest. Guess there are a lot of girls out there who have similar question like yours. Please allow me to analyze your situation as a professional investor. My annual income is more than $500,000 which meets your requirement. So I hope everyone believes that I am not wasting time here. From the standpoint of a business person, it is a bad decision to marry you. The answer is very simple. So let me explain. Put the details aside. What you are trying to do is an exchange of beauty and money. Person A provides beauty and person B pays for it, fair and square. However, there is a deadly problem here. Your beauty will fade but my money will not be gone without any reason. The fact is, my income might increase from year to year but you can't be prettier year after year. Hence, from the viewpoint of economics, I am an appreciation asset and you are a depreciation asset. <laughs> it's not just normal depreciation, but exponential depreciation. If that is your only asset, your value will be much worse 10 years later. By the terms we use in Wall Street, every trading has a position. Dating with you is also a trading position. If the trade value dropped, we will sell it and it is not a good idea to keep it for long term. Same goes with the marriage that you wanted. It might be cruel to say this, but in order to make a wiser decision, any assets with great depreciation value will be sold or leased. Anyone with over 500,000 annual income is not a fool. We would only date you, but will not marry you. I would advise that you forget looking for any clues to marry a rich guy. And by the way, you could make yourself to become a rich person with 500,000 annual income. This has a better chance than finding a rich fool. Hope this helps. JP Morgan, CEO. Understand, I usually pick up only the Upanishads, Vedic scriptures to comment on. But very rarely I pick up some modern, modern day writing or the recent postings to comment on. But I picked it up this personally. It has a very deep insights of Advaita. Please listen. Whole life is a business. Whole life is trading. You give something, receive something. Either you got more or you gave more. Or you got and gave equally. Whatever is said and done, whole life is a business. Please understand, but 
the good news says what you consider as you is the starting point the best news is that can be just updated by the advaita please understand what you consider you is the position trade position if you consider you only dependent on your physical qualities you only have depreciation asset you only have depreciation value but if you assess yourself based on the qualities you carry in your mind it can be you can be appreciation asset means intelligence your ability to handle any situation please understand whenever the queens were chosen they were always chosen the first priority was given to their appreciation asset not to the depreciation asset whenever the dasis were chosen they were chosen even with just depreciation asset but whenever queens were chosen in any kingdom they were chosen with a appreciation asset now i am introducing very important truth to you you can have something which is eternally appreciating if you perceive yourself only as a body you have only depreciation asset exponentially depreciation asset please understand whether you plan for your life based on your beauty or health whether you plan your life based on your beauty or your health you are planning on a wrong footing you are planning on a wrong footing please understand there is a sanskrit verse karyeshu dasi karaneshu mantri rupecha lakshmi shamayadaritri bojyeshu mata shayaneshu ramba sat dharma yukta kula dharma patni means ideal wife the one who works like a servant advises and strategizes like a minister feeds like a mother makes love like a nymph is as beautiful as lakshmi and forgiving like the earth this is a sanskrit verse one fellow read this verse and came to me and said samjha i have achieved the meaning of this verse i said you are fortunate blessings please call your wife receive the blessings he said no so i just change the word call your wives because so many qualities will not be in one person <laughs> i am married six with all these each one having these qualities anyhow how you perceive you if it is just occupied means your self image your identity about you if it is occupied completely by your look by your beauty the physical dimension please listen you are 
making all your strategies and plans based on depreciation asset more and more as time passes life will be hell for you kala will bring suffering for you please understand strategy which brings best things as kala passes is eternal strategies if your perception about you is all based on your beauty you are having exponentially depreciation asset you can manage few more years with various creams and cosmetic items but it will continue to depreciate second if you are perception about you is based on your mental abilities your ability to understand your ability to assess your ability to strategize your ability to cognize your ability to respond you have appreciation asset please understand you have appreciation asset as the time passes you will only have more and more joy you will not have more and more suffering kala brings you more joy if you are perception about you is based on the consciousness if you are perception about you is neither based on your beauty and health nor based on your mind's abilities it is based on your conscious space the space you carry the being you carry the consciousness you carry the idea you have about you understand you have exponentially appreciation asset kala brings you bliss if you are just based on your beauty you have exponentially depreciation asset if you are built on your health you have depreciation asset if you are built on your mental abilities knowledge you have appreciation asset if you are built on your consciousness you have exponentially appreciation asset whether kala is going to bring suffering to you or pain to you or joy to you or bliss to you understand when you have beauty and health making the comforts you want and positioning you want in your society is okay means making some money and making a career and making a family it is okay but please do not strategize your life based on that no old age insurance is going to be useful for the person who is paying it please understand because all old age insurances becomes useless by the time you reach that age because that money for which you insured is no more useful to run your life 
30 years before people who paid old age insurances, they would have thought $100,000 is the greatest money and they would have insured themselves for that. Now, with that, what you get your monthly money, maybe maximum you can make the ends meet, means you can have food and roof above your head. So please understand, now you may think maybe 10 million dollars is the best insurance, make it and see by the time you become old. Strategize. I am not saying don't take insurance. I am only saying insurance does not mean insurance. That's all I am saying. I am not saying don't take insurance, but insurance alone is not insurance. Listen. The first thing, strategize your life based on authenticity. Please understand. Strategize your life based on authenticity. How you perceive about you, let it be based on authenticity. How you perceive yourself to be, please listen. Internalize sincerely when you are listening. Let your perception about you be always based on the consciousness you hold, the identity you hold. Inner Awakening program is all about making you understand the right identity and go on asking you to strengthen the right identity. Authenticity is all about rewriting your right identity and goes on, go on strengthening that right identity, completing with all the unnecessary components you are carrying around your identity. If you are depressed this moment, ask yourself, is this time and energy I spend on depression is going to strengthen the identity I wanted to establish for myself. Identity building is just like bodybuilding and mind building. Society gives so much of importance and time to bodybuilding and mind building, forgets to let you understand identity building. The other day I was sitting and calculating the bio memory, bio energy and DNA structures of our swamis based on the lifestyle, food style. Please understand, very comfortably I am putting this on record in the national television in satsang. Anyhow, later on in times to come, these satsangs will be eternally stored and seen by crores of disciples yet to come and thousands of years yet to come. I am putting this on comfortably on record. Average all my sannyasis will live 120 years comfortably. You will see. Comfortably without any disease Average 120 years my sannyasis will live very comfortably, not with struggling, 
pulling, pushing, no. Very comfortably. Because first good thing, first good thing, I am already successful, is I made a very good eating habit for them. Very good eating habit. 90% of them abide by this. Good eating habit. Even the 10% they miss only rarely while they travel around. Good eating habit means with a right gap. The habit of eating only what is required for the body. That is what is the good eating habit. I was sitting with some of my swamis for a teamily dinner. We were scanning, scanning, scanning. We have not found even a single sannyasi or ashramite who abuses food means eating unnecessarily, eating out of depression, eating out of just lust of taste. I was so happy. This is the first step you have to master to develop the right identity. Then the right yoga lifestyle. I can say again, 90% I am successful. Only the 10% who are travelling outside, when they travel outside, night travel, bus, train, they miss. And the Swamis who are staying in some remote centres, they miss. Because they are all alone. That also should not be missed. Once Somebody can master the eating and yoga pattern. Now very easily they can build the right identity. Understand? Society stops with bodybuilding because by the time you come to the Right bodybuilding itself, you are, your energy, effort, everything is wasted. By the time you build the right food habit and yoga pattern, you are too tired or too old or you feel too much of effort has been spent on it. Then with knowledge you try to do mind building through education. If you are a doctor in that field, if you are an engineer in that field, any field. By the time you do the mind building, you stop the patterns of bodybuilding. You start overeating. That is why if people have ach if they achieve something in the knowledge field, they think they can pamper themselves and develop the bad eating habits and bad routines, lifestyle. I have seen the doctors. Their tummy will be hitting the operation table and they will have to bend all out <laughs> to cut the patient. I have seen engineers. They build amazing buildings. The foundation will be so strong and the roof will be light. But in their body, the foundation will be so weak and the middle portion will be <laughs> too heavy. leads to the weak columns and knee pain. By the time you build the body, you are tired and you don't want to build the mind. By the time you build the mind, you just want to pamper yourself and stop building body. Listen. You are never given the knowledge about building the being. Authenticity is building the being. Good.
this process which I am putting all of you through, the teamily Advaita process, the Advaita teamily is nothing but reminding you to build the right identity. Reminding you to build the right identity. Understand? I am getting the eternal insurance for you. Not old age insurance. Eternal insurance for you. <laughs> Whoever has built the right identity, you have a place in Aksharadam. Means unperishable space. Imperishable space, Aksharadama, which is equivalent to Kailasa or Vaikunta, the power of Kailasa, wealth of Vaikunta, put together is Aksharadama. The identity building has to be done consciously as a lifestyle. First, pen down the best inner image you want to have, outer image you want to project, how you want others to perceive you, how you want to perceive the world and others. And after you pen down that, every action, every thought, Every word you utter, go on reminding yourself, is it aligned to what I want? Is it aligned to what I want? If it is aligned, do it and overdo it. If it is not aligned, complete and drop it. Understand, many times you are Identity is in one direction, your actions are completely in the other direction. The conflict of interest in you drags you to the easiest direction. By the time you wake up, you are dead. Dead before wake up are what I call as accidental humans. You are born when your parents were trying to do something else. As an accident, you live as an accident and die as an accident. The person who starts building the identity, even if he is a failure, he will be successful in his journey. Understand? Understand? I am making a statement. Even if you are failure in building your authenticity, just because you tried, you will be successful in your journey either tomorrow or next day. Because even starting the journey with the right direction and the right guide is the greatest thing can happen in your life. That is why I am saying inner awakening first, foremost truth, experience, program can happen in your life. Wake up to yourself. Come back to authenticity. All the Swamis, Mahans, Kotaris, Tanidas, and devotees, disciples, Today, 
your homework is if you have done your completions with the teamily the next step is define your new identity you wanted to cast new inner image you want to have the outer image you want to show others image how you want to be perceived by others and life image how you want to perceive the world pen down all the four post it on my facebook wall not on inbox please do not inbox me only put it on the facebook wall i'll bless you all if you have not yet finished the teamly completion finish that and then pen down this you have time till tomorrow morning satsang to finish your teamly completions but people have finished for all of them this is the next step the right identity building only you can be liberated from the consciously built identity you can become mindless only from a mind which you built consciously not before that you can go beyond mind only jumping from the mind which you built consciously not from the unconscious mind unconscious mind can never be a jumping pad from mind to mindlessness mind to no mind state only consciously built mind can be a jumping pad for mind to no mind i bless you all let you all radiate with integrity authenticity responsibility enriching and casting eternal bliss nityananda thank you nityananda dhyana peetam nityananda nagar off mysore road bidadi bengaluru phone 0802727999 www.nityananda.org www.youtube.com/lifeblissfoundation